What's going on, everybody? Thank you all so much for tuning in to another segment of Mikasa Sukasa, and I am your host, Nico House. I have an exclusive story for you. Um, this is a story that is probably going to end up becoming one of the biggest, if not the biggest and most important story of the year. Not only because of the corruption involved, but because of everyone it includes and everyone that it affects. And by everyone, I mean, if you've ever had credit before, or a social security number, or a job, you should be paying attention to this. This story is about Equifax. And because of how convoluted and detail-oriented this story just happens to be, I'm not going to do it all in one video. I want to give you a general understanding about what's going on, and then from there, I'll release three to four more giving you details about all the different moving parts and then summarizing it in a final video in a final article that hopefully uh, you'll be able to understand and, and explain to others and also explain why this is an extremely important story that really should have broken a long time ago but once again mainstream media has failed us so obviously as you know Equifax had a huge breach huge breach um, there's a timetable that I want you all to, to understand because the timetable is important going forward so around between May and July is when everything was breached for some reason we don't have an exact date on that but I'm pretty sure it happened before May because let's be honest if you you're if you're a billion dollar corporation and you get hacked you know exactly when it happened you can pay people to figure that out for you so they've already hidden they already worked went out of their way to hide the fact that they were breached so it's probably it's probable that they were breached before may and so september the 7th is when the breach was actually announced uh, obviously May to July, and then what, July to August, August, September, that's, that's a, almost a two-month waiting period before they actually announced it. On September 8th, Equifax stocks plunge 13.7% the first day after the breach. Then on September the 12th, two senior executives announced that they were retiring, and Equifax CEO Rick Smith apologizes. On September the 21st, Equifax admits that it sent victims of the data breach to a bogus website that share a similar address to the one set up to help the victims. And then Equifax CEO Rick Smith retires. Now that's according to USA Today, um, but interestingly enough, that timeline is a... Uh, reveals a lot to us because according to a few DC consultants there were two people two corporate related people one in favor of Equifax another one in favor of another company representing another company that I don't want to talk about at this juncture but we'll get to him but they were Although they weren't lobbyists, they were there lobbying on behalf of Equifax. There was quiet dinners, there were private meetings, and even the top consultants didn't know what was happening. Now, they went to DC in that gray period, the period whenever the breach happened and before the breach was announced. Right now, they approximate the time frame that they were there around July. Why were they there? Well, there are a lot of reasons that they could have been there, because as you know, after the breach was announced, they did try to push legislation to make sure that Equifax couldn't be held accountable, but I am assuring you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is something much, much more nefarious than that. What we can do, however, is at the bare minimum, analyze what we know and then take it from there. <clears throat> now, the breach for Equifax is a much, much bigger deal than what Equifax, 
the legislature and mainstream media is pretending that it is. Equifax, as you already know, does do credit reporting and things of that nature, but that's not where their money is. They also do unemployment solutions, but that's also not where their money is. Their money actually comes from employment verification. Their employment verification services, along with their unemployment solution services, allows them to gather large amounts of data on anybody that they call a client. Now, they have a lot of Fortune 500 companies working under them. So that's a lot of data. Now, a lot of you may already be thinking, oh, my social security number, listen, as, as, as much as we want to pretend like that's the most important thing that can get out there, now people can find out about your, you know, everything about you from your phone number. <laughs> so trust me when I say that's the least of your worries. However, how would you like it if the next company you apply to knew exactly why you got fired? How would you like it if the bank that you applied for a loan through knew that you were getting fired or you were getting laid off or your employ or your employer was going under before you did denying you housing loans raising your interests what if they knew about you getting married changes in your tax bracket one way or the other all of this very personal information is at Equifax's disposal. They have it at their fingertips. Because when they have to report to state agencies uh, things about unemployment, they have to get personal data from the employer. Now they don't get everything. They don't, you know, they, they, they're, they're careful about how they go about it. But this is actually, like uh, these services are, 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 are normal. They sell these services on their website, the Employment Verification Services. However, there's something a little bit deeper than that they do as well. We call it, they call it, there's, there, there have been allegations from Equifax executives, former Equifax executives, saying that not only does Equifax sell these employment verification services and unemployment solutions, but there's another package above that where Equifax will give you data on whatever employee, potential employee that you may need. And that's exclusive if you buy the right package. Now, if they have all this data stored, which, by the way, they're supposed to have stored offline. They have all that data stored. Imagine what happened during that data leak. But even more so, imagine what happens whenever you're trying to do something like buy a house, get another job in middle to upper management for a Fortune 500 company or even sometimes not even a Fortune 500 company. any type of disciplinary statements and things like that, they can get leaked out. They're not necessarily supposed to leak that. Like your employer or former employer is not supposed to talk about exactly why you've been disciplined in some cases, but they do on accident. This is just one part of the massive story that is Equifax and Equifax corruption. And like I said, when it comes to the two lobbyists that were, or the two executives who were there lobbying, you know that there's something big going on. And we have the story and we have the scoop. Now granted, do we know for a 100% fact that Equifax is selling our very, very personal data uh, with services outside of the ones that they advertise? No, of course not, but that's not how corruption works. And given Equifax's corrupt history, Think about it. They knew about the breach. They didn't even announce it to you. They even have services such as Trusted ID and LifeLock that protect people from identity theft and identity fraud. 
And none of those people who had those programs, I know for a fact because I have friends who are personally using them, but none of those people who had those programs got warned. Nor did they get notified when their identity was stolen. So they were hiding something. It's a lot deeper than what you think. So stick around for our next segment on this. And more than anything else, always remember, ladies and gentlemen, find your balance. Peace.